Hey everybody, it's Jen. I'm gonna take you guys through my process for filtering and melting beeswax. So a few weeks ago, I had an unexpected honey harvest and I have a ton of wax and so I need to deal with that. And I thought what better way than to show you my process for getting it clean and getting it to the shape that everybody recognizes as a beautiful block of beeswax. So here we go. This is what it looks like after you've pressed all of the honey out of it. So I'm moving it from one bucket that has a bunch of holes in the bottom of it for the honey to drain through into a solid bottom bucket. This bucket will get repeatedly filled with cold water until the water starts to run fairly clear, which took me about four or five times. And I would just let it sit overnight. So I would drain the bucket in the morning, fill it up with cold water, kind of, you know, slosh the wax and junk around in there, and then drain it. So this is what that looks like after it's been rinsed out. It almost resembles sand or gravel. This other bag is virgin wax. What that means is there's never been any eggs laid in it. This wax was exclusively used for honey and that's what I took out of the supers this last summer. Notice how it resembles potato flakes. Nobody believes me when I show them this and say this is beeswax. Like this is what beeswax actually looks like from straight from the hive. So take a pot, make sure it's not one of your good pots because you'll never get the wax out. Make, just buy something like at a thrift store or something for 25 cents. Make sure it's just for beeswax melting. Then Fill the bottom of it up with about two inches of water. For this size pot for me, that was about two cups, but it depends on the size of pot you get. So just do two inches, give or take, of water in the bottom of your pot. Then put all of your wax in it, all the flaky wax. And for me, it wouldn't all fit, so I had to melt and then add some more flake and then melt it down and add some more flakes. As the wax compresses, you'll have more room and you can add, I was able to add that entire bag. So then we're gonna just stick it on the stove and melt it. Now this is on low and you see how fast of a boil it is going? So you cannot leave this unattended. It will get to this fast of a boil and overflow if you are not there with it and watching it. So then we're gonna take it off of the stove, set it on a cooling rack, and go to bed. You wanna leave this thing to cool down slowly overnight. Don't stick it in the fridge to help it along. You wanna let the particles that are inside the wax have time to sink to the bottom, and they only can do that if you let it slowly cool overnight. So the next morning, I take this guy out and I dump all the water outside in the grass because I don't want any wax particles, even if they're small, getting down my drain, because that's a recipe for disaster. So go outside, dump your water out outside, grab your hunk of wax in your pot and come back inside. So then I just take a towel and I scrape all of the gunk that is along the bottom until it's as clean as I wanna get it, and then we repeat. So again, I'm gonna stick this guy back in its container and then fill it up with a good two inches of water and then remelt the thing and do that whole process again. Let it sit overnight. This was my final melting. I'm fine with the amount of grit that's still left in here, but if you're not, just keep melting it down until it's perfectly filtered and it's the way that you like it. And that is how I melt beeswax. Mm -hmm.